All right, guys, here we go. About to pull it in the shop. Whoa, look at that, y'all. Oh my God, that one is even worse. How, how do you let your car get to this point? I wonder what the hell happened here. This dude got the zip tie holding the bunk together. That expense can cost you something way greater. Maybe it's an accident, maybe it's your life. Yo, what up everybody? It's Stephanie here from Mod to Fame, and we are back with another video here at Intract Tire again. And the reason why is because we're about to find out everything that is wrong with the new Project 300. Let's jump into it. Let's go. All right, guys. So in the last video, you guys saw us take delivery. Wow, that is loud. <laughs> and now that that cold start is done, you have seen us take delivery of this right here. It's a 06 Chrysler 300C. What does that mean? The C just means that it's a Hemi 5.7 and it has more luxury features. So the thing is, we purchased this car for cash. I called it the most important car we've ever purchased in the title of the last video or Chrysler's most important car to them and the reason why i said that is because two reasons one because it is true as far as chrysler goes this car right here kind of rejuvenated the company kind of brought them back to life made them relevant again because before this chrysler had absolutely like no relevance the 300 really kind of injected that back into them especially when this car came out in 2005. so as we look under the hood you can see it's just dirty but it's running right now and it's running smooth as hell, you know what I'm saying? So that's always a good thing, that's what you wanna see. The car idles nice, runs good, and it just needs a couple things. The first thing that is wrong with our Chrysler 300 is it needs an EGR valve replacement. So you see the EGR valve is that silver thing right there that needs to be replaced. I haven't checked the air filter yet. That doesn't matter though, because we're gonna be changing that. I also haven't checked the oil. That doesn't matter, we're gonna change that too. But under the hood the only thing that's wrong for check engine codes are egr valve so we can go ahead and close that the only things that i know that i want to do mechanically are egr valve the shocks don't seem too bad but i don't know but what is bad when you drive this car you hear clankity clank bang giddy bang come on man you hear that clank clank bang bang so what i suspect and we're gonna try to investigate today is that this car needs probably some sort of control arms, tie rod links, sway bar bushings. It's probably gonna need pretty much all of those things. But we're gonna find out today. That's why we're here at Intrac to find out exactly what is going on with the suspension. Besides that though, mechanically, this thing is pretty damn solid. It also has a check engine light though for the O2 sensors. So I'm gonna change them all because in most cases when you change one, the other one goes bad shortly after. So I will be changing that right after. Now we can move on to the cosmetics. This bumper, it's broken, broken. <laughs> like cracked, bang, broken. Am I gonna fix it? No, I'm not gonna repair it. I'm gonna replace it. Headlights, as you guys can see, that one is super clear. This one is super not. So you could do a headlight restoration thing that people do. I'm not doing that. I'm actually just going to replace it. Yes, I just kicked the headlight with the J's because I'm gonna replace it, so it really doesn't matter. Grill looks good, but we're gonna customize that too. All this chrome, not feeling. Go and get rid of that too. The paint though, although it's a little dull right now and dirty, the paint is in not bad shape at all. Um, the hood was painted at some point, I can tell, because it has like a little fish eye in it. I saw that, but we can take care of that little wet sand buff, which is what we're gonna do to the whole car. We're gonna wet sand buff the whole car, rejuvenate all the paint back to factory, maybe even better than factory shine. As you guys can see, stuff like this, this mirror is totally gone. It's an auto dimming mirror, but totally shot, faded out. That's what happens to auto dimming mirrors over time. They kind of just burn out. These pillars right here, 
shot. So I'm actually probably gonna end up wrapping these gloss black to bring back that original shine. The chrome moldings and stuff, I'm not sure what I'm gonna do with that yet. It all depends on what wheels I get, right? <laughs> these wheels right here, old school 18s, chrome plating cap thing that they do. Yeah, we're getting rid of that. We're not keeping that, we're doing wheels. I'm gonna see if this could be resurfaced and saved. If it can't be, we will replace that. That'll be new. Chrome, definitely gonna lose that. Definitely gonna lose this chrome. Definitely gonna, after I fix this door handle, this door handle is broken, gonna replace that. These chrome door moldings, gone. I'm losing that. That is not staying with me. That's not my style. Chrome on the bumper, I'm gonna do something with that. That's probably not gonna stay the way that it is. These tail lights, this one is good. This one, broken. It got cracked and they try to epoxy it, but water still gets in it. So we're gonna get rid of that. Outside of that, cosmetically though, the car is pretty damn straight. It got like little dents. So it got like a dent here that I can probably get taken out. It has another one on the other side of the roof, similar to that one that I can get taken out. And it has one here that I can get taken out. Listen, budget depending, I'll take those things out. If not, they'll be there. I mean, at the end of the day, it's an 06 car, but overall, the car is pretty damn straight, man. It's a straight car, no real issues to speak of. Cosmetically, nothing major at all. And the beautiful thing is, you saw some of the other cars I was looking at had rust all here, and it had rust all here. This car has none, no rust. That was huge for me, absolutely no rust. So that's a huge deal. That's gonna save us a lot when repairing and trying to get this vehicle back to standard. Outside of being dirty, this is faded a little bit. Nothing we could do about that. Whatever, it's gonna have that sheen. Maybe we can put like some sort of a, a matte resurfacing thing to make it look matte again, whatever. This right here, these things, uh, they make covers for. I'm probably gonna get the covers to make it, maybe like choose like a gloss black cover or something that would look nicer. Otherwise, besides that, it just needs a ton of cleaning. I'm definitely gonna get new carpets, but the rest of the surrounding carpet, I'm gonna get cleaned. Like I'm gonna get that all really, really clean, deeply. These seats, I thought I could save it, but they're gonna have to be reupholstered. But it's just a driver's seat, really, that has to be reupholstered. The passenger seat looks good. Like, we don't have no complaints there. Armrest, although it's dirty, is in good condition. Steering wheel, dirty, but good condition. So, absolutely no complaints. This is like a little cover. I'll probably pop that back on. That's no big deal when we get it reupholstered. But this looks good, right? The pillar is just dirty. This trim piece, we're gonna replace. I'm gonna get new door moldings so that this way we don't have to worry about, you know, that kind of stuff. So interior though, this thing, I guarantee you guys, once it gets a significant shampoo, scrubbing, steaming, cleaning, disinfecting, this thing is gonna be like brand new again on the inside. I could assure you guys because overall, it's in good shape. Like it's not in bad shape at all. Uh, I think I already talked to you guys about this. I don't know if it'll come out, but I'm gonna try to get all of this, whatever this is, out. And then this, that's not a big deal. I'm gonna probably do it myself. It looks like, I don't know why that's hanging like that, but I'll get it reattached. It's no big deal. Overall though, as you guys can see, the car is in decent shape, man. It's in really, really decent shape. Outside of just years of not being cared for lovingly, in terms of like condition, mechanically and stuff, the car is all there. So let's get this thing in shop. Let's see what suspension components it needs so we can go ahead and start ordering everything. That's number one, baby. All right, guys, here we go. About to pull it in the shop. Let's find out everything wrong with our Project 300, baby. Intrac has the best types of lift. If your car's on the floor, you can still use an Intrac lift because the lift goes into the ground. Perfect type of lift. Hey guys, you know what? So you're looking for your perfect car, right? You're looking for the project car that you always wanted, your perfect Toyota Supra, or you want your perfect daily driver, this three row V8 SUV that I have, or you've been watching the video series and you know that we got the Stimmy Hemi recently our chrysler project 300 even if you're not looking for a car today hit the link in the description right now which is autotempest.com 
find your perfect next car, whether it's a year from now, two years from now, six months from now, or two weeks from now, you can look right now just to see what a market is, just to see what cars are going for all throughout the country or in your region. Visit autotempest.com, link in the bio. Back to the video. Going up. <laughs> All right, Freddie, listen, man. You gotta tell us everything wrong with this thing, okay? You gotta tear it apart. We're gonna check it out now, get the real diagnosis. Freddie is the man. Whoa, look at that, y'all. Do that again? Wow. Y'all see, he's not moving the wheel on the inside of the car. That's on the outside he doing that. Jeez, that's dangerous. Man, is that like connected at all? That's crazy. Somebody will really hurt themselves with that, boy. Oh my God, that one is even worse. Wow. Sheesh. How the brakes look? The rotors and pads. The rotor is, it's all right. The rotor's all right. For the the, what about the rear? So so. The rear is so so? You wanna change the whole and break out the back and leave it the front. If so the front one is shook and so good, you can change everything. So if the everything. front one if the front one shakes, you just change everything. Yeah. Alright, we checking the back now guys. The mufflers look great. Alright, the back only only rotor and brake pad. Rotors and brake pads for the back only. Though. Everything else look good. Yeah. A little bit rusty, but everything is good. Okay. Yeah, right. All, right. All the exhausts look good too, right? Yeah, I jack it on check the wheel bearings. All right, he's gonna jack it up so we can check the wheel, the wheel bearings in the back. So that's what that was in the front, wheel bearings? What make the front wheel loose like that? Wheel bearings? Uh, it's the control arms. The tie rods. Wow. Okay, so all of it. Man, that is dangerous, man. Listen, guys. I gotta be completely honest with you, man. How does a car get in this state, right? How do you get to a point where you can literally move the wheel, like wiggle it? How, how do you let your car get to this point? And the truth of the matter is, you know, some people, man, they really, really, really face hard times. And yes, they love their car. They wanna try to do their best to keep their car on the road, keep it running. But when unexpected expenses happen, sometimes a lot of people don't have it, you know what I'm saying, to keep it up. So here's what I would say if that's you and you're in that situation. This here is dangerous. So I would say to you, okay, you only have a certain amount to spend every month on a car, right? But and this maintenance item is stopping you from doing that one thing. I guarantee you there is something that you are spending money on that you can probably cut back on. Do that. Cut back somewhere just a little bit. This could be your life. This could be the difference between you stopping on time for someone having an accident and you not. This could be the difference between you hitting a puddle and hitting a wall and not hitting a puddle and hitting a wall. This is the difference between you making a sharp lane change and the car does not cooperate and going. This right there, that expense can cost you something way greater. Maybe it's an accident, maybe it's your life. Guys, listen to me, man. We're gonna do everything that we gotta do on this car. We're gonna show you that process and we're gonna bring this thing back to 100% brand new condition is what this car is gonna be like. And we're gonna do that process with you in front of you so that you can see what's possible. We're gonna show you ways and how we're saving money to do that. I mean, first of all, the biggest way we was able to save money is by using autotempest.com to find a car. Because using autotempest, we was able to find all different cars on all different websites. 
So the websites consisted from cars.com, the car gurus, the auto traders, the car soups, the carvanas. All of those websites have inventory. And if you're only looking at one, you're probably missing out on the others. And Auto Tempest was the way that we can configure and bring that all into one. So that's the one thing how we saved huge in buying this car. Just starting out from that search on Auto Tempest. So maybe your car is too far gone and it's time for a new one. Visit autotempest.com and you never know what cars you could potentially afford until you look. So do a search now, autotempest.com. See what you got on there that you like. Anyway. Back to working on the car. All right, guys, I just want to do one look underneath the car to check everything. Exhaust looks good. A little rusty, but it looks good. I wonder what the hell happened here. Probably the same thing that happened here. Oh, wow. He probably rolled over something. Yeah, yeah he rolled over something and it broke. That just got to come out. The cladding is just broken, period. Yeah. It's supposed to go the other way, D. I know, but it's going to hang, so I'm, I'm tucking no, it. No, 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 no. I'm going to just cut it off. It ain't doing nothing. I'm just cut it off. But everything looks really good under here. Otherwise, you know, a little oxidation, a little rust, a bunch of leaves. Dude was collecting leaves. But yeah, it looked like he probably rolled over something here and pulled down the exhaust stuff. But it's okay because we're getting rid of this thing. This right here is holding back all of our sound, baby. And we need our sound. So we're gonna open that up. Oh! You done tucked it already, huh? Like I said. Oh. <laughs> little yes. brothers never listen to yeah. big brother. Big bro, little brother thing. You guys, you guys, you know, some of you might understand, some of you may not. Cats look good. Even this right here, most cars, that's what goes bad and they start leaking. That looks good. Everything looks good, guys. It looks like we got us a good car, man. <laughs> it's one thing, it's one thing to think you got a good car, and it's another to know. Oh, shit. This dude got the zip tie holding the bumper together. But it's all good because, like I said, we changing the bumper. So, no biggie there. All right, guys. Cool. Let's go see how much this thing is going to cost us. So, what were you saying? What we need to get? Two lower control arms. Two lower control arms. Yeah, yeah. So, it by leaving. What about upper? Uh, passenger side, for, uh, to, uh, the upper. This is not good. So, then I might as well do the driver side, too. Yeah, this is brand new. This the new. driver side upper control arm is brand new? He did say that. He told me he changed the upper control arm, but he only changed only, it on one only side. Only one side. Yeah, Jesus but, Christ. Why, yeah. why would somebody do that? Why do people do uh, that? I don't know. This maybe not, they just can't afford to do both. Yeah, but the problem, you you put on one new one, you know, first one, maybe three more, two more, you got to set the problem the other side. Right. This is recommend, you so know, put on both. Okay. Yeah. So listen, I'm going to buy a whole kit. All right. The kit I found has mm -hmm. everything. It all has right. all six control arms. So... Two upper, two lower, and then they got like two that yeah, like the extension arms. Yeah. The extension arms. Yeah. So it's a whole kit, yeah. and it has the tie rods too. Yeah. Tie rod, and now the tie rod. Straight by links. Guess how much the kit is that I found on Amazon for this car? Maybe four hundred. One hundred ninety dollars for everything. Yeah. And it got and it got good reviews. That's crazy. So listen, guys, all you got to do is like kind of really look. We're gonna change all the rotors and pads. Yeah. All of them. Alright. Okay. Anything else that and you see? That caliper not good. This caliper. This caliper is no good? No good. Look. Sit. Oh, it's All right. locked. Alright, look the other side. The caliper is locked. Right. Yeah, you said the caliper is no good. Yeah. Look that side. The side's good. Lock it. Wow. Right. You think I should change both calipers? Oh no, that one is good. Change both side, but. Yeah, but calipers don't really go bad that much, no. right? No. Okay. So that caliper is no good. Yeah. All right. Well, there that you go. And that's and yeah. there's two shock and soil from them. And two what for the front? The shock and soil. The strut suspension. Two struts. Yes. It need both. Yeah. Well, we were gonna change that anyway. So we need struts. Mm -hmm. We need all the suspension components basically. A caliper. Yeah, boy. Yeah. Rotors and pads all the way around. Yeah. All right. And so. Brand new car. Okay. After that, brand new, right? Yeah, right. It's gonna drive brand new. I, I told him. It needs an EGR valve too. I gotta change the EGR valve. Yeah. And I think one of the ABS sensors are messed up because the traction light is on and it won't go off. Yeah. Maybe because of that caliper. Oh man. Yo, Derek with the man, Jesus, he wrote down everything. Wow. Everything we need. Everything we need. Caliper, tension arms, front. Jesus. All right, so we got the list, guys. 
know what I'm saying? <laughs> Boom. <laughs> we, we got that. We got that. All right, y'all. I'm going to talk to y'all in a second about the parts that we got to order. And we're going to talk about how much it is. Yo, listen. Before we go another step further. Before we go any further with this right here. Do yourselves a favor right now and do us a favor. Support Mod the Fame. We got all types of merch there. So I got right now on the white SRT charger joint. We have a Challenger. We need to add a 300 up there, but we don't got that up there right now. But everything is available right now on mod2fame.com. Everything is amazing quality. Everything arrives to you on time. Make sure you visit right now mod2fame.com. Support the channel, because Lord knows we about to drop a bag. All right, guys, here in the lab, breaking out the laptop so I can find these prices, man. All right, so the good news is I already found a good amount of stuff. And what I'm just doing is I'm going to go over what it's costing me roundabout for everything. So I ordered, believe it or not, mostly everything between Amazon, pretty much Amazon. Yeah. So uh, remember I was telling you guys I found like a whole kit with all the control arms with everything. So if you go on Amazon right now, you'll see a front control arm kit for, it'll say Chrysler 300, Dodge Challenger, Dodge Charger, Dodge Magnum. All of them are from years 05 to 2010. So that's what you wanna look for. I found this complete kit for, that included the uppers, the lowers, the tie rods, all that stuff for like 170 bucks literally $170. I have Prime. I don't know if that means that I get free shipping or some discount, but that's what I found it for. So go on Amazon and look for that. It's a 14 piece kit. If you need it, I don't know if this is you or not. Then I went and I found the rotors for the front and two calipers. Cause I figured what's the sense in just changing one caliper. Even if he said it's good, that caliper is 14 years old. It's going to be bad at some point. So let me change that too. I found the calipers and front rotors and pads for again $170. Not bad. With tax 180 on that, with tax 181 on the control arms and that whole kit. In addition to that, I did rear rotors, which I did two rear rotors and pads. I got all of that stuff total for 90 bucks and caliper, all the arms, road. That was it. That was it. That was everything. So there you go, guys, not terribly expensive. And that's the beautiful thing about working with cars that's this old and American. American cars, you can find the parts a lot cheaper if you search. Now, is this as good as the Mopar branded stuff? Is it the OEM stuff? No, it's not. However, if you're a person in the pinch, you don't necessarily have a lot to spend and you need to get your car back on the road, these parts will suffice. If they're good or not, we don't know yet. Um, that's gonna come up in a future video when we install all these parts and I start using these parts. Granted, like I said, Intrac is my sponsor, but I will tell you what labor should cost. That doesn't mean that I'm paying that because Intrac is a partner and sponsor of the channel, but their pricing is pretty damn fair. So I'll put that too so you know what you'd have to pay a shop to do this type of work that we're doing. Uh, my suggestion to you is if you have like one of these cars or any car that has one side bad and you've never changed the other side, like control arms, tie rods, uh, bushings and stuff like that, change it all. Because trust me when I tell you, it's gonna go bad. If you can't afford to do it all at once, fine. Change the first side, save up a couple weeks and go change the other side because it's gonna go bad and even if it lasts you another two years, like let's say these parts last me another two years. Is it Mopar quality? Is it gonna last me 14 years? I doubt it, but if it lasts me two or three years, that's usually the time span that somebody keeps a car, three years. And, if, and even if it does, the money that I'm saving, I can spend it again in two, three years. But anyway, guys, I just wanted to sit down and go over this stuff with you. Spoiler alert, I ordered a lot more than just the parts that we needed. I ordered modifications too. So that's coming to the channel. We're gonna build this thing up, but first we're gonna get it back 100% in functional condition, restoring it mechanically 100%. We're gonna do oil change, spark plugs, uh, filters, all that kind of stuff. We're doing everything. So make sure you come back the day after tomorrow because that's when the next video is probably gonna go up. And in that next video, we should be giving you an update on a Hellcat. 
because that car is coming to a close as well. We're almost done with the Hellcat. We were waiting on something very small. We were waiting on push rods. So the push rods came in. We're changing the push rods. And after we change the push rods, we're going to button it all up, throw it on a dyno. That should be in the next video. Super excited about that one. But anyway, guys, thank you so much for rocking out. And remember, I will be announcing soon how to enter the giveaway for this 300. That's right. I'm giving it away. Yeah. Big news, man. Big news. Anyway, thank you for rocking out. It's your boy Stefan here from Mod to Fame. And if you like this video, you know what to do. Like, subscribe, share, hit that bell notification so you don't miss no more videos going forward. But until the next one, here in my little home office, we out. We out.